Okay, welcome back everyone. If you haven't already, um, please go ahead and pause this video and take a stretch break. Um, what I'd like to do um, after you're done stretching is take a couple minutes to talk about electric potential energy. And voltage. Okay, now again, these two concepts are not going to be tested on Monday, but I feel like they're very important, so I would like you to take notes. Okay, so I want you to think way back to last unit where we said that there were two ways to describe gravitational potential energy. There is the easy way, which was when the gravitational field G is constant, and that was MGH. And then there was the hard way. And the hard way is basically anywhere. And for this, we said it was big G, big M, little m over R. And there was a negative sign. We're not going to worry about that too much. Okay? Now remember that we also said that G was kind of a funny thing. It was a ratio of the gravitational force to the mass. And it had units of newtons per kilogram. And the electric field is a funny thing. It's the electric force divided by the charge, and it's got units of newtons per coulomb. Now, the reason that I bring this up is that in physics, we like to do ratios. And the next thing I'm going to show is another type of ratio, okay? This, so first of all, these guys are gravitational potential energy, okay? That's what these two equations are, MGH, and negative GMM over R. Well, there is a weird thing called the gravitational potential. Not the potential energy, just the potential, which is a really weird name. And what it is, is basically a description of how much energy, gravitational potential energy to be exact, an object has in a gravitational field per unit mass. And that's the important part. So what it is is a ratio of gravitational potential energy per unit mass. Okay. And now, the symbol for this is weird. You don't need to know it. It's a phi or a phi, depending on how you do things. But that is gravitational potential. OK, so now what we can do is write gravitational potential energy as mgh. And when we divide it by m, we get something which looks like this, gh. And that's not super important, but you should realize that it has units of energy, joules, per mass, kilogram. So those are the units for it. And then the other thing is that we can take the long version, GMM over R, and divide that by M. And that gives us GM over R. This is another way of writing the gravitational potential. And so both of these have units of joules per kilogram, units of energy. OK, so now let's talk about electric things. So let's talk about electric potential energy. And there's two ways to write this. When you're near a constant electric field, it's very similar to what we had before. Remember, we had MGH. Well, what plays the role of M? Little q. What plays the role of the gravitational field G? E, the electric field. And then instead of H, we usually write a D for distance. So QED. And 
the long way to write it, remember we had GMM over R, is K big Q little Q over R. Okay, and so this is uh, two expressions for electric potential energy. And now I'm going to do the same thing as before, where I divided, and I'm going to say basically how much electric potential energy but instead of per mass I'm going to write per charge how much electric potential energy do I have per charge and so that's the ratio of electric potential energy divided by little q and this gets the name the electric potential. Just like before we had the gravitational potential, this is called the electric potential. Okay, and so the two ways I can do this is Q, E, D for potential energy, and divide by little q. And then I can also do, so that's just E times D. Oh, and what units does this have? Joules per coulomb. I can also do the long version, K big Q little Q over R divide by little Q. And that's K big Q over R. Again, choose joules per coulomb. Okay? And the thing is, this is kind of weird to keep calling it electric potential. So there's a different term for this, and that is V, voltage. So when you hear about a voltage, it's really an electric potential. And what it is is telling you how much electric potential energy there is per unit charge. OK, so let me give you a couple of examples. All right. So the Van de Graaff generator produces a voltage of 300,000 volts. And so the weird thing is that a joule per coulomb is also called a volt. It's also um, used for electric field, that the unit of electric field could be newtons per coulomb, but it's also volts per meter. And hopefully you can see from this guy why that's true. Because joules looks like volts times coulombs. And over here, newtons times meters equals volts times coulombs. Or another way to see this is this guy. Whoops, that's not right. How about this one? And so we have volts is equal to the units of E times meters. So E is in volts per meter. So anyways, back to Van de Graaff. It's 300,000 volts, but I have no problem whatsoever touching it, OK? Whereas the Tesla coil is only about 50,000 volts, but I wouldn't want to touch that. OK, so why is that? What's going on? Well. Remember that voltage is a ratio. Voltage is potential energy per unit charge. So there's many different ways to get 50,000. You could have 50,000 divided by 1, 50,000 joules and 1 coulomb. And 1 coulomb is a lot of charge. That's enough to kill you. Okay, That's not good. Another way we could get 50,000 volts is if we took 5 joules of energy being carried by, I think that's right, 0. 0.00001 coulombs. If my math is off, you get the idea. Okay. Now this would be a lot better to deal with. And this is kind of what's going on with the Van de Graaff generator, is that the potential energy is low and Q is really small, which gives me a big ratio of 300,000. A Tesla coil, on the other hand, 
has a lot of energy and a lot of charge, which is bad. So here's another analogy, is that during the winter, you might go hang out at a bonfire. And so the temperature of the bonfire is relatively low compared to a lot of things, but the total energy it contains is lots. Whereas a sparkler on the 4th of July, if you get hit by one spark, that's a very high temperature, but the relative energy is very low. I know what I would pick. I would rather get hit by a sparkler than jump into a bonfire. Okay, so that's the basics behind voltage. And so when they say that there's a 12 volt battery, it's carrying 12 joules of energy per one coulomb of charge. Okay, and I wanted you to see this because now that we understand voltage, we can start to talk about what's happening with um, the electric circuits and batteries and all sorts of interesting things. Okay, so um, at this point, I would like you to do two things. Number one is that there's a worksheet, and the worksheet says on it literally electric potential and voltage. And I believe that it's on my front desk. Um, and you'll see that there's all sorts of fun pictures on it. There's a, there's a box which is being held up and then the box falls on one side and then on the other side is a negative charge that's being held up by a string and a positive charge. So that's the worksheet and I'd like you to look at this for about five minutes and work through this. Don't go to lab tables for this. And once you feel satisfied with your answers for that, then you're going to go on to some mini labs. And so the mini labs, um, when you get to it, you can pause this video. I'm going to display the list right now. So, whoops. Okay, so here is the list of the three labs. So you can pause this. Um, but what I'd like to do is to show you what each of these are. So first of all, battery voltage oops, looks kind of like this. And these are all FET labs. Okay. And what your job is to just search for battery voltage, find it, and then write a short paragraph describing what's going on here. Okay. And so you can show the battery, and you can change the voltage. So this shows the voltage on the right minus the voltage on the left. So it's a potential difference. Okay, so there's that one. The second one is going to be resistance in a wire. And for this, you have three different slider knobs. Only two of them are fitting on my video screen. There's a third one, okay? Three different slider knobs, and you want to see what each of these do to resistance. And so resistance is the next piece of the puzzle that we're going to need for circuits, okay? And then finally, our third one is the battery resistor circuit. And you can try to describe what's going on in this, okay? And you can look inside you can show how voltage is calculated, and you can play with some slider bars here. So for each of these, I'd like you to write uh, about a three to four sentence paragraph describing what's going on, okay? When you finish with all that, then you can get started on set four, okay? So thank you very much for all your cooperation today. I really do appreciate it, and I hope to be back on Thursday.